Hello, everyone. Welcome to Environment Technology Connect. Environment Technology Connect is a TechnoBiz initiative to introduce environment technology manufacturers and service providers to global community to explore business opportunities as well as partnerships. This program comprises of a company presentation and a short conversation with the top management of the company. Today, TechnoBiz introduces Concube Group based in India as headquarters based in India and with international offices in various countries is, is one of the leading solution provider related to water and wastewater treatment, bioremediation, solid waste management, waste to energy and air pollution control systems. In this program, we have Mr. P. Devanan, the founder and the managing director of the Conque Group, to introduce about their technologies and services. And also we'll have an opportunity to discuss with him about uh, successful projects, his vision, and also what opportunities are there to work together with the companies, interested companies. So let's welcome uh, Mr. P. Devanand to make a presentation on the Concave Group. Good morning, everyone. So I am uh, Dev uh, from Kankyo Group of Companies. Um, so the pleasure introducing our company and the portfolio of uh, technologies what we have uh, in the clean tech space. So I would be uh, running through a brief presentation about the uh, our organization and uh, which are the industries we are serving and what type of uh, technologies we deploy in the clean tech space. So Kanku group of companies. So we established this company in the year uh, 2015 and um, um, primarily to focus on different clean tech uh, um, technologies which can be used uh, in the industrial front. So we work on uh, five verticals. Uh, the main verticals are uh, water and uh, wastewater treatment. This is one vertical where we cater for the uh, industrial as well as the commercial water treatment segments and wastewater treatment segments, which also covers sewage treatment uh, systems. And uh, the second vertical is on the solid waste management. So under solid waste management, we cover the industrial solid waste uh, and domestic solid waste and uh, industrial hazardous uh, uh, solid waste. So we provide the complete solutions for handling different types of solid waste. So this comes under this vertical. And the third vertical is uh, waste to energy. So rather I could say waste to resources where the waste is converted into a resource like uh, energy or it can become uh, upcycled into a waste is upcycled into a different product or waste is recycled. So there are many options. So waste is converted into resource under this vertical. So we deploy different technologies again for this based on the nature of the uh, waste. And uh, the fourth vertical is on the bioremediation. So bioremediation is nothing but the biological remediation, which is predominantly used in uh, uh, water body purification, like uh, lakes, rivers, so all the pollutants are removed and using uh, remediation technologies. And also we extend these remediation technologies for uh, oil spill sites where the um, oil pollution can be removed from the soil and, and uh, water bodies as well. And uh, soil remediation also could be done using the same techniques. So all these bioremediation projects comes uh, under this uh, vertical. And the fifth vertical is the air pollution control systems. Uh, we focus uh, mainly on the industrial air pollution control systems, 
where uh, uh, different types of pollutants, air pollutants are uh, uh, removed using our technologies. And also uh, post COVID, we started uh, working on the indoor uh, air pollution space as well, and try to develop systems which could uh, sterilize the uh, indoor space. So, so we have come out with some compact uh, systems for uh, sterilizing and uh, keeping the indoor space uh, clean from bacteria and virus. So these are the five verticals and uh, our scope of work starts from design engineering, manufacturing, and, uh, supplying and installing the plant, operating the plant and uh, providing training to the operators and providing the annual maintenance uh, contract services. So we give the complete spectrum of uh, uh, turnkey solutions in all these uh, uh, verticals. So when we started in 2015, so uh, it was uh, started only with CanCure Clean Tech India Private Limited, uh, focusing in all these areas. But as and when we progressed, uh, we formed uh, a different different uh, JV companies uh, exclusively for certain technologies. Like you see the CanCure Bird Private Limited. Here we work um, predominantly on customized biogas solutions that is converting the organic waste into biogas. So these are pre-engineered systems. So with this, this is with a German collaboration and uh, Indian engineering, the uh, entire product is manufactured in India, which will cater for the local market as well as for the export market. And uh, our main focus is pre-engineered solutions, uh, customized biogas solutions, and also uh, large scale plants, uh, bio CNG facilities are being set up uh, uh, under this banner that is CanCure Birth Private Limited. The other technology is a very innovative one where we convert uh, uh, waste to methanol. When I say waste, it is uh, garbage. So garbage is a mix of uh, all type of domestic waste. It has a wet waste and dry waste. So the mixture of waste is converted into a biofuel called methanol. So this is a very innovative new technology which we are bringing it under the banner CanCure Enercheck Green Fuels Private Limited. Enercheck is an another company where we formed a JV uh, for executing these uh, waste to methanol projects. And Saving Planet Earth is another JV company which focuses on plasma gasification technology. Uh, this JV partnership uh, is from uh, Philippines and uh, there we are already uh, uh, setting up a plant for handling the biomedical waste. And plasma gasification is a thermal destruction technology which can handle any type of uh, industrial waste and uh, biomedical waste. So uh, these projects comes under Saving Planet Earth uh, from Philippines and uh, here Europe so we do the air pollution control systems um, that is uh, mainly for the indoor air pollution control. So we produce the system here and we export it to Europe. And uh, so it is it's sold all over Europe through the distributors. So this is for the indoor air pollution control system. So we have um, four uh, JV companies apart from the mainstream company CanQ, Clean Tech India Private Limited. So the, that's myself uh, and uh, my partners, uh, Sriram and Balaji, and we have an uh, eminent advisory board who are specialists in chemical engineering, biogas, biofuels, and uh, plasma. So we we'll get involved uh, depending on the nature of the project. So now I would like to just brief on certain technologies or key technologies uh, uh, which we do under CanCure CleanTech. So as I told you, water and wastewater treatment uh, was the main focus under CanCure Clean Tech India Private Limited. So we have technologies uh, like uh, hybrid membrane bioreactors, 
This is one of the novel technologies because you might have heard about the membrane bioreactors where we have cross flow MBR systems and uh, uh, submerged MBR systems. Hybrid MBR systems is an advancement where uh, we combine the moving bed bioreactors along with the membrane bioreactors. The advantages are quite, uh, the system is quite compact and uh, the life of the membranes are prolonged uh, due to this combination. And it can take uh, any fluctuating loads in terms of organic loads and, uh, and delivers a very consistent output. So this is one of the innovation and Mira carb reactors is yet another uh, revelation in the wastewater treatment segment. So these are the special carbon fibers which are introduced into a reactor tank, which can do all the process in one single tank, like an anaerobic process, aerobic process, nitrification, denitrification, and uh, phosphate removal. So one single reactor which can handle multiple pollutants and uh, these carbon fibers are uh, uh, designed in such a way that it can accumulate various types of uh, microorganisms in different locations. So this is one of the key technologies which we are now uh, putting up in the, with the industrial wastewater treatment systems as well as domestic uh, wastewater treatment systems. And there are the other conventional type of systems as well, but I would like to just highlight only the uh, innovations or the latest uh, developments in these technologies. And uh, you can also see there's a sequencing batch biofilm reactors. So normally uh, in industry, you will find the sequencing batch reactors, um, which, which of course consumes a lot of space. You need a huge tank. So we have combined along with the biofilm process uh, in order to reduce the uh, footprint of the entire uh, treatment system. So this is an another development where we have already worked and we started commercializing the SBBR, so sequencing batch uh, biofilm uh, reactors. And uh, we also have the uh, original hydrodynamic reaction technology. This is for uh, retrofitting um, your, or you can say that um, if you want to augment your existing treatment plant, um, these type of uh, uh, hydrodynamic uh, reactor technology uh, will be much useful. This is nothing but an aeration process. It's a uh, special type of uh, uh, aerator which is installed in the aeration tank uh, which behaves uh, the same way as it behaves in the clean water. Like if you say the alpha factor is one in clean water, in wastewater also it will be one. And it has the best mixing efficiency. Uh, so in any aeration process, it's not only the oxygen transfer, it is also the, uh, uh, you know, mixing efficiency is more important to dissipate the oxygen into the aeration process. So this is one of the key technologies uh, which we try to integrate and we have uh, a few installations in uh, India and uh, there is no replacement required for these type of aerators. Like if you go for the conventional type of uh, diffused aerations and, uh, uh, you know, you need to keep on changing every year. So this has a, a self life of about 30 years. So once you put it in and you need not have to remove and, and a lot of uh, fuel savings up to 50% can be achieved with this. So these are some of the um, advantages. And <clears throat> on the solid waste side, we also do which will come under CanCureTech or uh, the composting. So that is a uh, vessel composting because uh, um, the conventional process of composting is in an open space which creates a lot of odor and leachate problems. So we have developed uh, customized and uh, containerized and uh, packaged type of in-vessel composting units which can um, um, you know, treat the organic waste and convert it in, into a compost in a very small space. And um, then we have hydrothermal reactors for again for mixed waste which can produce solid fuels as well as uh, a liquid fertilizer. So, so this, these are the solid waste treatment technologies which comes under uh, uh, can you clean check. And um, let me go through the next one. Yeah. So I would like just to brief for more on the can BERT private limited uh, um, technology under which we 
produce the containerist type of biogas plant. So, so one which you see there, the green color container. So it's it's not a container actually. It looks like a container. It's fabricated, but it's much stronger than the container. Easily transportable uh, in a ship because we follow the same uh, sizes like 20 feet and uh, 40 feet size and still smaller sizes are also available. So we produce these uh, plug and play type of uh, biogas systems because normally you find the uh, biogas uh, systems which are construction uh, civil work which are under the ground very difficult to monitor you know so we have a complete monitoring system smart uh, controls for this so sitting from anywhere in the world you can just see the performance of your plant so it is integrated it's loaded with the uh, features and these are modular systems as an immune capacity right from we start our capacities from 100 kilograms per day onwards this is 100 kilograms of food waste per day onwards it can go as high as about uh, 10 tons or 12 tons per day up to that in the containerized type of version for larger capacities it is uh, customized solutions the one which you uh, see here this is a large circular tank uh, um, just made of out of glass fused uh, construction and uh, on top you can have the gas holder these are for large scale plants uh, about 20 tons and um, again we can use a different type of uh, uh, substrates right from agro waste and uh, food waste segregated organic fraction from uh, municipal garbage then all these things can be converted into bio CNG. So the bio CNG, once it is produced, can be used as the transportation fuel. So we need to compress, and uh, uh, it is the characteristics are almost equivalent to a CNG. So it will be a perfect replacement for CNG. So this uh, we are producing now. So. These are the large scale plants right from 20 ton per day up to 100 150 tons per day we can uh, customize the systems for di different type of uh, feedstocks so this is uh, yet another uh, innovative technology as i uh, briefed you in the beginning of the presentation uh, that's converting the garbage into uh, methanol you know the whole world is uh, moving towards green methanol the shipping industry is now uh, slowly getting converted into uh, uh, you know from marine fuel into um, this green fuel particularly methanol so all the cargo industries are now converting their uh, engines marine engines uh, into methanol operated uh, marine engines so in 2050, there is a target uh, for uh, global uh, CO2 emissions by uh, International Maritime Organization. So they have taken a commitment to reduce the greenhouse gases. Now, already the process has started and uh, everywhere now uh, the, the methanol fleets are um, going to start from this year onwards. And as such, methanol can be used as a fuel substitute, which can be blended uh, uh, and we can also have 100% methanol run engines and uh, so it can be a fuel substitute and um, these are green methanol because the conventional methanol is produced from the fossil fuel whereas this green methanol are produced from the green sources that is waste so we have plenty of waste in India or in, in whole of Asia if you take the uh, because of the population we the generation of waste is too high and this waste now we have problem of uh, you know uh, sending it to the landfill because we don't have a huge area to uh, dump at the landfill area and uh, segregating again is a big issue because that doesn't happen 100% uh, anywhere so always we have the mixed fraction so this is a big challenge uh, in these technologies so this uh, uh, gasification technology can handle mixed waste that is one of the biggest advantage so you need not have to uh, segregate any of this waste the mixed waste can go and it has a pre-processing section where it will remove the metals uh, and uh, the inert matter uh, like uh, mud and uh, stones glass then rest of the fractions like uh, your food waste plastics paper leather clothes 
all those uh, material will get into the gasification process and uh, we convert into syngas it's a high temperature gasification process we convert that into syngas and uh, syngas is further uh, synthesized to methanol so and this methanol is further purified and uh, then uh, um, it's sent to industries so this is the whole process so it is like a closed loop so uh, if you take 300 tons of uh, garbage we can produce about 30 tons of biomethanols you can say 10 percent so only five percent rejects would be there which can end up in the landfill area or we can even avoid that five percent by making some construction material like uh, eco bricks so that that five percent of uh, waste also could be avoided ending up in the landfill area so this is a totally closed loop systems with uh, very very minimum or negligible emissions which will comply to the global norms so this is one of the innovative technologies we have developed and patented and uh, we are the second in the world to hold patent for producing methanol from garbage and uh, so a lot of interest has been created now uh, we are executing a few projects we have started few projects uh, now and uh, we see a remarkable process on this technology in the coming years this is one of the novel technology plasma gasification so plasma gasification is a high temperature um, pyrolysis technology so here we use the plasma process so plasma process is nothing but the fourth state of matter so we know that the solid liquid and gas so the fourth state of matter is the plasma the entire universe is plasma sun is a plasma okay so this plasma energy is the uh, typical example what i can give you is the uh, uh, lightning lightning is a plasma effect you know so so when uh, lightning strikes when it strikes on an organic matter uh, let it, if the lightning falls on a tree the entire tree is just converted into ash so that is the amount of energy it has and power it has so the same thing we are uh, mimicking here and uh, we are trying to put the effect inside a reactor using the plasma torch what you see here on the left hand side this is the plasma torch so when it comes in contact with any hazardous material any organic material it gets totally destructed when i say totally destructed it gets converted into a vitrified ash so when i say vitrified ash there's a difference between a normal ash and a vitrified ash when you burn something you get uh, product by product uh, as heat and then ash particularly when you incinerate incinerate the municipal solid waste or a biomedical waste or plastic waste or hazardous waste you produce a lot of ash now this ash is again classified as the hazardous material so it is not that you have fully eliminated uh, eliminating the uh, complete waste but still the hazardous fractions are there in the uh, uh, ash when you say vitrified ash so vitrified ash gets formed at a very very high temperature so the plasma gasification has a temperature range of about 3000 degrees celsius so what happens is that at this stage it changes the matrix of the ash which means when you keep the ash outside and when it comes in contact with the moisture nothing will leach out from the uh, ash this is the advantage if you put the same incinerated ash outside and when it comes in contact with the moisture all this incinerated ash contains a uh, lot of heavy metals and other hazardous substances so when the moisture comes in contact it leaches from that and enters into the soil and the water body so that's why it's classified as uh, you know hazardous uh, uh, waste Whereas in vitrified form, the entire matrix is embedded and you will not have any leaching effect. So this is one of the main advantages of a plasma gasification. Plus based on the nature of the waste, uh, what is a fraction, what com combination of municipal solid waste or biomedical waste, syn gas is produced as a byproduct. And then that gas, uh, with that gas, you can uh, fire a steam boiler or you can run a gas engine to generate uh, power. So where and all we can use, because this is power intensive process, 
so the objective of this uh, plasma gasification is not to produce a power it is not a waste to energy project it is a waste destruction process so whereas difficult to treat waste particularly the industrial hazardous waste the hazardous waste ends up in the hazardous landfill area and there are no technologies to handle this so we need to keep dumping these hazardous waste in the landfill area for 15 years then and close that uh, uh, landfill and go into a new landfill area whereas this plasma gasification will totally destruct this waste okay so and it can be adopted to municipal solid waste also and biomedical waste also and plastic waste industrial hazardous waste so these are the categories of waste which can be used now this one plant what we have uh, set up now in philippines is for the biomedical waste which we started uh, much before uh, this covid so we want to put up this because uh, worldwide the biomedical waste is a big issue because uh, it has different types of uh, waste like plastic waste uh, body organs and uh, the other uh, infectious uh, materials all those things so handling this is very difficult and it has to go for a, a source segregation process and all those stuff so Plasma gasification is one solution where you need not have to segregate any of this. So it can all the waste can be combined and we can just dump inside the reactor and switch on the plasma torches. So it will totally disrupt and uh, it's emission free. You know, at these temperatures, there won't be any dioxins or furons which are you know, produced. Now, post COVID, what has happened is that uh, worldwide, the biomedical waste quantities have increased almost six times. So all the countries are now facing this issue because we started using PP materials and um, you know gloves and masks and other stuff. So the entire waste globally has increased. So that has again created a lot of interest for these type of technologies because incineration is the, not the way to handle this type of waste because it has a lot of secondary you know, pollutants which are emitted into the atmosphere. So now we have already kickstarted this uh, project we have started commissioning this project now and uh, it will be running in full fledged in the next few months and, and these type of technologies are ideally now suitable for uh, biomedical waste and industrial hazardous waste of course because the disposal cost for industrial hazardous waste is uh, very high not only in india and in other countries also when you compare with the domestic waste industrial hazardous waste disposal is a very big issue so the industries can adopt plasma gasification to handle their hazardous waste within their landfill within their premises instead of sending to the landfill area uh, because if they are going to send it to a uh, landfill through a service provider they have to pay hefty amount uh, when i say hefty amount it ranges from as uh, low as 20000 rupees per ton to it goes as high as 100000 rupees per ton so which is pretty high so these are the areas where uh, this plasma gasification can be successfully used and um, so we are already started our plant there and in india also we have a couple of plants for industrial uh, plants and these can work for mid-range so like uh, up to 10 tons or 15 ton um, and we can build plants as small as uh, one ton per day also so the smaller the systems it's always better to have a good control on the process uh, if there is a large capacity then we have to go for modular sizes and uh, under Cantia Europe so we started uh, uh, setting up uh, indoor air pollution control units and um, uh, we were doing a lot of uh, air pollution control systems particularly for industries to cut down particulate matters and to reduce on the uh, hydrogen sulfide, uh, complete elimination of hydrogen sulfide, and um, also the uh, sulfur emissions and uh, denox systems to uh, emit, uh, to remove the uh, NOx emissions. So these are some of the pollutants where we started addressing uh, in the industrial front. And post COVID, there was a lot of interest. So we tried to adopt the same technologies what we use. We, we use a 
bipolar ionization technology for some of our uh, industrial air pollution control. So we try to adopt the same technology for indoor space as well. So one thing we need to reduce on the size of this because it can not only remove the volatile organic compounds, but it can also remove the uh, bacteria and virus. So during the COVID, uh, we developed these systems and then we deployed these systems in the whole of Europe, which has been um, validated and it is now being used extensively in the European market. And in India also, it is being uh, used. And these are some of the systems what we developed called Plasmion, which can be fitted uh, in the classrooms or hospitals, office spaces. And we have different capacities for uh, you know different room sizes and also we have a mobile one uh air purification systems mainly used for the uh, uh vehicles and trains and uh you know buses and aircrafts so and also we have some centralized uh, bipolar ionization systems for uh, malls theaters auditoriums big spaces because we cannot afford to have these type of systems uh, in a large space enclosed space so we have the uh, we have the ac ducts so the ac ducts can be um, provided with this type of bipolar ionization and uh, this can totally distract the vocs present in the uh, indoor air space as well as the bacteria and uh, virus this is a eco lab training because uh, this is a very interesting field environmental field and uh, we don't find uh, one of the biggest challenges is that we don't find uh, trained operators okay we deploy the technology but what next industry needs uh, people to operate the plant uh, not always uh, um, they will ask us to operate because they also have the industries has their own team so we need to train them and also we need to provide uh, people for them to uh, you know operate the systems so all this uh, uh, you know we have to bridge this gap so what we thought is uh, we have set up a eco lab uh, training and research facility in chennai where uh, um, there is a demonstration of these various technologies right from wastewater technology the pyrolysis and um, um, and we also have the in vessel composting systems and the biogas plants so we provide the uh, complete uh, training um, for the operators and also we uh, give an opportunity for the research scholars who can carry out uh, some research work here in uh, uh, in this space and we guide them so they so that they become employable you know once they come out of the universities and also industry needs uh, this type of expertise you know operators and uh, managers uh, for all these things so this is a very good uh, center where uh, we have all this uh, type of uh, systems now and uh, there is also the boba biogas uh, training uh, academy so the biogas uh, training uh, academy is exclusively for the uh, biogas where uh, we have an online training sessions uh, and different programs uh, which is run on a periodic basis for uh, exclusively on the biogas and bio cng uh, and also now we are touching upon the bio hydrogen production uh, through this uh, online training courses so these are some of our clients so for our various uh, um, projects so i think uh, we we covered almost all big companies uh, uh, like uh, LNT, Ford's, and uh, uh, ONGC, and Lloyd Group, Vital. So some of the companies where already we have uh, deployed our technologies in solid waste and uh, wastewater treatment. And uh, so our head office is in uh, Chennai, and uh, and we are as I told you that. Uh, the European region, we focus mainly on the uh, indoor air pollution that is through Cancure Europe. So we have an uh, office in Germany and, uh, and in Southeast Asia, we cover uh, um, from Philippines, we cover the entire Southeast Asia. And we also have a Japan office where uh, uh, 
we handle some of the projects from um, Japan as well because we bring in certain technologies from Japan and we try to indigenize uh, the whole system in India because uh, we cannot always uh, import the complete system but some of the key technology because in Japan we find a lot of advanced environmental technologies so we try to bring in some of the key technologies and try to uh, integrate with the uh, uh, local system and try to provide as a package so this is what we do uh, under um, the Japan office uh, uh, collaborating with the uh, Osaka City University and other consultants there so that's about uh, us and uh, uh, I'm glad uh, to have this opportunity to present about uh, Kankyo Group and uh, I thank uh, Technobis for giving this wonderful opportunity. Thanks, Pram. Dave, it's a nice presentation, and uh, you have explained um, uh, you know all your capabilities, which are very very important for the not just for Indian environment or industries, but as a whole world. And, um, I, you, you have a, a diversified uh, 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 services and for environmental solutions, uh, catering not just water, wastewater, but also solid waste and also the air pollution, and also that uh, waste to methanol, biomethanol projects as well. So it's very nice, um, you know, present, you know, service from uh, uh, let's have a little, uh, you know, more discussion along with the, what you presented and for the benefit of the audience and also the uh, whoever wanted to collaborate with you in the future. Um, well, first of all, we go with the name just for the sake of understanding what is meaning of Kankyo. Yeah, Kankyo. Uh in Japanese language means environment. So, so our main focus is on the environmental technologies. So that's why we coined in this uh, name as Kankyo. And uh, all this thing, Kankyo group started uh, from Japan because I have my partner who, who lived in Jap Japan for about 25 years and he's my classmate as well. So then we thought, okay, why don't we bring in some key technologies from Japan? And that's why we coined in the name as Kankyo. Okay, so so you have a lot of Japanese influence there, and yeah. um, you know they don't compromise on the quality and precisions also. So I, I guess it reflects, you know, and they're very concerned about environmental issues. So perfect, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, for you know, you, as you know, there are many companies offering various environment technologies. You know, and uh, what are the key USPs of Kankyo, why anybody has to select Kankyo for solving, you know, all the solution, the, the waste and water waste and various problems related to environmental issues. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you see uh, Kankyo group, uh, we work uh, with several verticals all under one umbrella. So though I say solid waste, liquid waste and recycling and all those stuff, everything comes under one single umbrella. Now, if you take a greenfield project, so like, you know, um, they have the basic requirement is right from the water treatment. Then they have an industrial waste water treatment. Then they also have the solid waste, which is generated and uh, industrial hazardous waste is generated and uh, industries also have the domestic waste, which is generated and uh, there will be an industrial air pollution also. So this is one single platform, like we have like a multi-speciality hospital. You go to one hospital because, you know, you have all the facilities. So that is one uh, key thing, you know, you know, so that the customer has the comfort of going to one party and getting the solution, you know, so address the solution. And all these solutions are interlinked, you know, when I say water, you know, the wastewater has an effect on the water and all those things so that it's always better to have a synergy between all these areas. So this is one of the advantages and also we bring in value addition by bringing in technology advancements within the systems you know, in the various segments so that uh, they get the latest offerings and uh, thereby they'll be saving a lot in terms of operation cost uh, maintenance cost and, and as well as capex so that is that is a usp of thank uh, uh, so you have a various um, kind of integrated service because you know any industry does not have just water issues. So you also have waste and air pollution and things. 
and more importantly i, I found that you have uh, international expertise as well that makes this much uniqueness as well i think one thing you you need one you uh, one interesting part of your company is that you have a training center which helps to train your you know the, your customers and you have pilot scales and educate them i think that also is yes in any system um works you know technology is good always good works well it's you know matter is about how to run it in, in a continuous manner in an efficient manner that depends on the manpower i think that having a, uh, in-house training center you have eco lab i think that is uh, what i see much different from you know many of the other suppliers yeah so can you talk about the you know you established company in 2015 and uh, how is the progress you know in terms of business wise or the number of projects wise you know so can you talk about it yeah, yeah as a, a clean tech company with a lot of innovation so we were very choosy in the projects to when we started 2015 and uh, because basically i am from this industry um, for the past 30 years i'm in this industry so we used to get the regular uh, um, sort of inquiries uh, but uh, we want to focus on areas which are quite challenging and where the people really look out for a solution let it be wastewater or a solid waste treatment so we worked with a uh, a few selective projects so we were not really focusing on volume business or something like that we want to have a very challenging assignments to start with and create a platform uh, uh, of solutions for these type of uh, problems so that is our core focus so when we started we started with a few projects one or two projects in solid waste few projects on wastewater treatment so in the first year we were we had about uh, close to about uh, three to four projects now um, every year we find there is an increase of about uh, 30 to 40 percent growth rate in terms of uh, volume of business also and uh, probably we could have even doubled it but we restricted our growth because we want to concentrate uh, or focus on technology oriented uh, uh, you know products and uh, solutions so but much before COVID, there was a slowdown because the entire world came, came, to, came to a standstill and, you know, so now again it started uh, picking up well. So currently we have about some 10 projects in hand which are running in these various uh, areas. And uh, under, under each and every JV, we have now projects which are already kick-started and uh, going through. And we see a great uh, momentum and opportunities now. Very good, very good. And also good to know that you're not going on the volumes, number of projects, but selective and challenging, and you can deliver in a nice way. And I guess so, yeah. can you talk, uh, you know, see any any company uh, to provide, as you know, there are many suppliers uh, you know, which provide equipment. Yeah, we can provide everything you need. When there is a problem, there is everything. So I think it's a, one of the important thing is infrastructure facility and also capabilities to deliver the project. Um, so can you talk about what kind of infrastructure you have and um, capabilities, whether it's on the fabrication side or whether it is commissioning stage, you know, which are the key, you know, to, to deliver the project in a cost effective manner at the same time, execute the project in, in particularly in the commissioning stage. And so, discuss about or highlight about your know, strengths in the infrastructure and uh, uh, you know other capabilities yeah yeah we are a team of about uh, 30 now and uh, we have a design department which takes care of the complete uh, engineering and uh, uh, design aspects of all the projects and we have a process engineering division where uh, we have uh, engineers to take care of the uh, complete process engineering uh, one and uh, they'll also be very supportive during the project execution and commissioning and uh, a full-fledged service team is also available with us so who would be providing uh, uh, training to the operators at the customer's place and as well they do the complete uh, installation and support and all the stuff and uh, so we have one standard uh, protocol for all our uh, uh, manufacturing like we have set the standards so either uh, the project is in india or the project is outside india the standards are same so we don't compromise on that so the 
the quality standards. So we have identified uh, partners, uh, fabrication partners, uh, where uh, you know um, they have the complete facilities right from having the inspection protocols and the facilities like you know you go for the radiography testing for the material and the pressure testing and you know so all these things under one house so that's how we are able to cater to the uh, you know outside india as well so because there'll be a third party uh, verification and validation certification is required some of our products are already ce certified so so we fall under the bracket so we have a strong in-house uh, uh, quality checks and uh, quality teams okay so and we also have a, a, a subcontracted facilities and services which we avail and where they also have to undergo a, a detailed screening process before uh, we agree to sign a contract with them so so we synergize with a few outside contractors as well for some of the key projects and uh, as far as fabrication is concerned we have a full-fledged uh, fabrication uh, subcontractor facility which includes the uh, quality checks at uh, different uh, production process yeah that is a key key for the success of the project yeah so um you you, you know your company is located in india but you have an office is globally you know in europe in uh, in the Philippines as well as in Japan. Um, how which market is important for you? Indian market or overseas market? How the markets are growing for you? Uh, we don't see the geographic area. We see the problems. So problems okay. are seen everywhere. So we are a solution provider for the problem. So we also get uh, projects from uh, Bhutan. Now we are doing a project in Bhutan. So. So there was a problem with an organic. Hey man, your voice is gone. Okay, can you wait and? Um, okay, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I could hear you. I didn't have any. Uh, I, lo I lost. I lost your voice for a few seconds. Okay, a few seconds. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, you, you will wait for a few seconds and you start answering again. Okay. Yeah. So you will start with the question or shall I? No, oh, you answer it. I already, I already asked the question, so I cannot go back to the question again. Okay, so wait for a few seconds and answer, you know, I will not ask question anymore, okay? So you will continue that one. So basically we are a, a solution provider. So we don't work on specific geographic areas though we are located in India. So wherever there are issues or uh, people look out for a solution, you know, we reach out to them. So uh, we execute projects outside India as well, as well as in India. So it's not that uh, in Europe, we have to develop so much of market in, uh, in the domestic segment. So uh, we deploy our technologies all over the world. So wherever there is a need, we work on that. Currently now we are doing projects in uh, uh, far end of Europe, in Bulgaria, we are doing a project. In Bhutan, we are doing a project. So all these are, uh, you know, it's a need based. They are looking out for some solution and we perfectly fit it in that uh, uh, area. So our focus is not uh, region wise uh, business. It's, uh, it's a solution driven approach. So wherever there is a problem anywhere in the world, we just pitch in. And now uh, through the, uh, you know, we have a good network now globally through LinkedIn and other, so where we get a very good, good visibility. So in that way, we don't have any issues. And we work with a lot of uh, channel partners in different regions. So they identify the problems and uh, send us the requirements to us. So it is easy for us to move through them as well. Um, it's very interesting to see um, you have a joint venture companies for each partner, you know, German, and the Philippines, how this is working, the partnerships with the Indian company. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very challenging. It's not that, uh, you know, the JVs are formed uh, instantly. So we need to get along uh, with, these, uh, with the partners for quite some time. 
and try to understand each other. And uh, when it comes to India, they also want to have confidence on us because um, they have mixed opinion about the uh, Indian engineering, you know, because they, they are not very confident. They say they cut corners, we work on pricing and a low cost uh, solution. You know, it's not a solution driven approach. It's more mostly a cost driven approach. So we have to just uh, uh, remove that barrier. And also we have to build credibility in terms of setting up some pilot facilities, showcasing your uh, credibilities and all those things. So it's a it's a long process. So uh, when I say that uh, all these JV companies, they all, almost took about two, two and a half years to three years to partner with us. But the discussions were on and uh, they were also evaluating us and seeing some of our installation. And that's how we just built confidence in them. At one point of time, uh, we got married. That's very nice. I think it shows that uh, your values and your capabilities and your delivery and also the transparency, which matters for the many you know, international companies to work together and uh, particularly with Indian companies or some maybe I'm not just putting only in Indian, but per se, but it's also many Asian companies to when they wanted to uh, partner with in particularly in Europe or in US or in Japan, Japanese, so what they look at is the uh, values transparency, the delivery, and also perfection. No, really, nobody gets a perfection, but uh, you know, the service oriented. Uh, you know, so uh, it, I think um, kudos to you and you have uh, the, in the, having a good partner marriages, you know, multiple marriages <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with uh, international companies and well-recognized companies and uh, very useful uh, technology solutions as well. Yeah. So let's give it a little, you know, talk on the air, air purification. They talk about indoor air pollution issues and the disinfection, particularly then because of the COVID. How this thing, this segment, this segment is growing for you in terms of business. Yeah. So if see during the COVID time, that is uh, in 2021 and 20. There was a good market potential for this and um, and not much in india so and, uh, because in india like uh, you know during the peak time yes there was a market but when it slowed down and people are quite casual about it so they don't bother about the uh, real uh, indoor space uh, uh, sterilization but if you see the global the developed nations there is a by standard before the covid itself there is an indoor air pollution is one of the very very uh, key areas and uh, by default they had systems for um, you know, cutting down on the uh, emissions of VOCs and uh, uh, you know the uh, bacteria and uh, virus load in the close space. So there is a good uh, market which is progressing at a very steady rate and uh, but now there are several choices which are available for you know because this is a very challenging uh, area because we are not worked in a domestic segment like this. We are focused more on the industrial segments but there is a need uh, which is that you know that we need to have an indoor space so here also again we work only in the european region not uh, many projects in india so we just uh, when whenever there is some requirement comes we do that but we really don't focus uh, this country but in all the developed nations where these are standards and standards are implemented uh, very strictly um, there, the business is uh, growing at a very steady pace. I, I think it is also that this air pollution control system or the indoor air pollution system becoming like a marketing strategy for the venues and that, you know, you, you visit my place or shopping malls, uh, everything is safe. You know, it's, there is a, that driving force also there. Whether it's not a country in India, whether people, of course, when the crisis is there, okay, there is or everybody rush to for the solutions uh, but in the long term some of the you know big players uh, they see it the disinfection and, uh, cleanliness or clean rooms or clean facilities or uh, it's kind of norms and becoming it is going to be a culture in the running and, and operations of the uh, facilities you know so, yeah. so, um, can you talk about your you know major projects or interesting project that you have done on the wastewater treatments. I think you have a lot of solutions on the MBB or hybrid membrane there. It's okay, SBBR, and uh, so uh, you you have innovative solutions. And, uh, 
what are the some you know, completed or ongoing projects that related to wastewater treatment? Yeah, so as I told you, the hydrodynamic technology um, has um, really um, we pitched it into the uh, retrofit market, so where they need an upgradation of their uh, treatment systems. So we have done a one MLD plant uh, uh, in Hyderabad. It's a very challenging uh, uh, place, like you know, where we have various floors. So this is a uh, this is a meditation center where uh, you have uh, the loads, um, uh, seasonal loads, differing. You know, like you have as low as 100 cubic meter, and it goes as high as 1,500 cubic meter a day. So wide mm -hmm. fluctuations. So None of the biological systems will work uh, under this scenario. So we developed the systems integrating our uh, uh, original hydrodynamic uh, reactor technology and uh, quite successfully it's been running for the past uh, three years without any issues handling uh, various uh, loads. And the same technology has been deployed to a couple of uh, paper mills where uh, they want to have uh, uh, you know, increase the capacity. So without changing any of their uh, infrastructure, like uh, civil works, additional civil works, when they try to double the capacity of the plant, so normally you need to have an additional civil construction, aeration tank and things like that. So we completely eliminated those things with the available setup itself. We just introduced these technologies into the existing system and it's successfully operating in uh, about four, four plants in now in paper mills, exclusive in paper mills, uh, where the loads are pretty high and uh, they're getting a very consistent uh, output quality. So this is one of the technology which has now uh, gone up and also we have introduced a skid mounted type of electro oxidation systems for uh, mm. uh, paper effluents, you know, which are difficult to treat by biological means. Uh, these are different process where uh, a biological system may not be very effective. So there as a pre-processing, we have used this electro oxidation technologies skid mounted uh, technologies which are um, uh, working very well and uh, as I told you the Mira carbon STP which is very very compact systems addressing the latest norms because the latest norm says that uh, the biological nutrient removal is also a must so it has now come in the policy level so you need not have to go for a uh, multiple tank configuration so all these things can be done in a very small space and uh, we have done uh, in uh, in Crescent Engineering College. So so this is one of the projects which we have completed uh, recently. So these are some of the technologies uh, where we have deployed uh, as far as the wastewater treatment is concerned. And a successful project as far as the solid waste is concerned is we have for done for the Nasik uh, Municipal Corporation, where uh, we are processing the uh, food waste that is the which is a segregated organic fraction of uh, garbage mixed along with the fecal sludge, because normally you find fecal sludge, a separate treatment and, uh, uh, you know, this organic is separated. We combine both these things and uh, we produce power out of it. So this project is up running for the past uh, three years, mm -hmm. successfully producing uh, about 2,500 units of power um, mm -hmm. every day. And uh, now we have several plants, uh, uh, like decentralized uh, containerized type of biogas being set up uh, in India itself and uh, and in the neighboring countries also we are doing some uh, projects and uh, gasification yes industrial hazardous gasification like what I told you that we have a biomedical facility uh, deploying the plasma gasification the same plasma gasification we have a couple of installations within the country also for uh, um, addressing the hazardous waste like one ton, two ton plants we do have and we also have done one of the innovative projects for a uh, uh, gold refining company where uh, we use plasma gasification to extract the gold from the dust you know so a few grams of uh, gold every day you know by using this technology so these are some of the challenging assignments already we have uh, done and uh, some of the projects in this space are now ongoing. Yeah. Very nice. So you have a very interesting projects there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how about the uh, water control systems? Uh, you know, which is also a serious, you know, serious issue for many, both wastewater as well as uh, uh, 
uh, solid waste treatment systems also. So do you have a, do you have offering for the air, uh, odor controls? Yeah, the odor control is uh, mainly uh, because of the uh, hydrogen sulfide in the yeah. captain. So these are the main issues what we have. So we have a solution for that. Uh, it depends on the intensity of the pollution, uh, uh, you know, um, this hydrogen sulfide uh, present in the uh, emissions. So normally we work with uh, uh, scrubbers. We have uh, biological scrubbers, which right now we are doing one project uh, to cut down on this uh, hydrogen sulfide, which is coming out from a, a big decentralized sewage treatment facility. So there we use uh, biological scrubbers to cut down on this. And also we have for a, a lighter loads, we, have, we can have this ionic type of system, bipolar ionization, which we use it for indoor air pollution control. The same thing can be applied for uh, you know external pollution control particularly to remove this uh, odor so there is a wet process there is a dry process there is an i can say it's an electronic process the bipolar ionization is an electronic process so there are three different solution based on the pollution load is what we look at. Uh, I want to touch a little bit on that the waste to methanol project so where you are implementing waste to methanol Currently now, uh, this is a very, very challenging space uh, um, because uh, uh, though we completed our research and development way back in 2017, we couldn't get an opportunity to do this, uh, you know, uh, waste to methanol. You know? Now there is a new policy which has come in uh, within the country, uh, biomethanol po policy uh, in 2018. So which has now opened up doors for us, but we mm -hmm. were ready to that but there are no opportunities uh, for us to do that but we did a, a validation uh, we set up a 50 ton plant in Russell Kaima so and we uh, uh, ran the plant for uh, two years this is a uh, under a grant program and uh, we validated the technology and uh, third party has validated this completely and we were quite uh, ready with the technology and uh, the engineering aspect of it now we are setting up one uh, plant in Chennai itself, a small plant for the full scale demonstration, a three ton mm -hmm. plant which we are doing. And in Northeast, we are planning to set up a 300 tons per day. So it is in the final leg of uh, signing the papers. And municipal corporations have shown a lot of interest because uh, they have the problem with the waste. But this is relatively a new technology. So we are taking the risk of covering this uh, uh, you know, technology, and we take the ownership by setting up the project under a BOT model. So we run the plant and we own the plant for 25 years. And the municipal corporations also need not have to worry too much about it because they want to get rid of their waste. So the only thing they have to provide the uh, land and the other uh, related infrastructure. So the rest of the things we come and do that, and uh, you know, and complete the project. And this has created a lot of interest uh, within the country and because already the biomethanol targets have been fixed now and globally also the market is now booming. So I think uh, shortly we should be doing a couple of uh, projects and uh, to start with we want to uh, complete the pilot facility in Chennai as well. A full fledged uh, pilot facility is just only a demonstration or a training center where we want to showcase this technology. And uh, the one project which you are going to start in Northeast will be a first of its kind, which is slightly of about 300 tons of processing capacity. So the other interest, uh, we are, it's in various levels of discussion and shortly uh, we see a lot of progress in this area and we should be doing a couple of projects more. So it looks like a biomethanol business for you will be an, an, an important uh, portion in your overall business. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Dave, it's very nice to uh, get to know all about the Conqueo uh, and uh, your projects and also the vision, the facilities and uh, capabilities. Any final message to your current customers or potential future customers? Yeah, as I told you in the beginning, this is a one-stop solution for uh, most of your environmental uh, issues. And uh, we also look for uh, partners with whom we can synergize and uh, particularly like you know if different regions so we cannot travel down or you know find out what's the problem in that particular region 
So we would also like to, uh, you know, um, partner with uh, channel partners where we appoint channel partners within India and outside India as well, uh, where they can come out with the issues in that particular region and we can provide solutions. So we are lookout and and uh, uh, we can provide the complete uh, turnkey solution and sustainable solutions. It's not in terms of uh, uh, CapEx, so it's all CapEx, OPEX, and uh, uh, we own the project completely in terms, you know, it's not that we just supply the system and say that, you know, fit it and forget it. You know, we just continue our relationship by providing the uh, services and uh, most of our systems have this uh, IOTS by default so that sitting from here, I can know what's happening uh, uh, with my project elsewhere. So these are some of the value additions which we don't, we, which we do without compromising, you know, the technicalities. So, so we are looking for synergy partners uh, who could uh, spearhead and take our technologies uh, within India as well as uh, outside India as well. So we welcome uh, synergy partners. Okay, thank you, Dev. I'm sure uh, your journey continues with more successes uh, for the Concu, and uh, wish the best. Uh, and uh, guys, uh, that's the session with Mr. P. Devana, the managing director of the Concu Group. You heard their technologies about their services and projects they are doing. And also, they're willing to invest in the projects, and uh, they're also you're looking for uh, suitable pa partners, win-win way, uh, you know, not just only one particular market, any part of the world they're willing to serve. So please connect with them, you know, how to reach them. You can go to check their website for more information, conqueo.global, or you write to Dave at the email address, uh, info at conqueo.global. Okay, that's all for this uh, session on the Environment Technology Connect. We learned about Concu. I'm um, um, wishing that um, whoever is watching connect with the Concu group, particularly with Dave, for, for the collaborations or partnerships. Thank you all. Thank you, Param. Thank you for the opportunity.